Good morning. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to get back with you. I usually don't. I, I'm usually more uh, uh, quick. I'm usually quicker to get at things, but I had a house full of people this past weekend, and I did not get a chance to do much of anything. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and help you with this 3E here. And this is a little bit confusing sometimes. Now, it says in this paragraph from Charles Dickens' novel, Tale of Two Cities, identify the underlined words as either DO for direct object or OP for object of the preposition. For each direct object, find and underline twice the action verb that affects it. For each object of the preposition, find and circle the preposition to which it belongs. Now that part's pretty easy, and I think um, you probably should get this one fairly easy. This one's a little bit difficult. There's a compound object of a preposition and one compound adjective. When you find them, you're gonna write compound OP and compound ADJ in the margin next to them, and then draw arrows from each compound form to the appropriate label. Okay. Lots of instructions there. Okay, so remember that a direct object only goes with an action verb. So remember when you find your action verb and, and the subject, you say, uh, you say subject, action verb, whom or what, or yeah, whom or what. And then whatever answers that is the direct object. Now, an OP or object of the preposition only goes with a preposition after a preposition. All right, so let's see if we can do this. Now, the coach lumbered on again with heavier wreaths of mist closing round as it began the descent. Okay, with heavier wreaths. So let's first, in this sentence, let's first find any prepositional phrases. On again is a prepositional phrase because on is a preposition, but that's not underlined, so we don't have to worry about that. I gotta clean my glasses. Hold on just a second. My glasses got dirty for some reason. I just cleaned them a few minutes ago. It's pretty frustrating when you're trying to look at something. All you can see is a fingerprint. Okay, so with heavier reads, with is a preposition. Remember your list of prepositions? Now, I know this is a review, but I really don't care if you look back on these reviews. You, I prefer you not to, but you can. Sometimes my kids get to the point where they're just like, Mom, I don't know. Like, okay, then just look back. So if you need to have a list of prepositions beside you, that's fine by me. So with is a preposition. So with heavier wreaths would be a prepositional phrase, which means if this is the preposition, this must be the object of the preposition. So what does it tell us to do? Uh, okay, so this is an OP because it's in a prepositional phrase. And then do we have to, for each object of the preposition, find and circle it. Okay, so it belongs to this preposition with heavier reads. Okay, of mist is also a prepositional phrase. So then this would be your OP and then your preposition would be of, okay? closing round as it began the descent. That's all we got right there. Now, n there's nothing up here, because it says we're gonna have a compound object of the preposition. Remember when it says compound, your key word for compound is going to be and, because conjunction and is generally what makes two objects of the preposition, two subjects, two adjectives, two adverbs, or whatever. And there's no and here. All right. The guard soon replaced his blunderbuss in his arm chest and having looked to the rest of its contents and having looked to the supplementary pistols that he wore, blah, 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 we could keep going. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so the first of all, let's look for prepositional phrases because once you learn those prepositions, it's going to be very easy to find those. Remember, I told you, it's just like riding a bicycle. It's so hard and awkward to do at first, but then you'll learn them and you'll know how to find it. Okay, so the guard soon replaced his blunderbuss, no prepositional phrase here, in his arm chest. In is a preposition. So that makes this an OP. Now, would this be considered a compound OP? No, it it's not. It's 
it's like a compound word, but it's not a compound object of the preposition. That would mean two or more, or well, one, yeah, two or more. Okay, and having looked to the rest, two is a preposition. See, it's easy when you know those prepositions, and I know you're you're just now learning them, and, and it's harder for you to spot those, but you'll learn them, and you'll be like, oh, I get it now. Of its contents, guess what this is? That's a preposition, so that makes this an OP. So let's go back to this one we skipped. This is not in a prepositional phrase, so it must be a DO, so let's figure it out. The guard soon replaced Replaced is an action verb. Okay, guard is the subject. Guard replaced whom or what? This. So this would, his blunderbuss would be, whatever that is, that would be the direct object because it goes with this verb. No compounds anywhere. I don't see and. Well, this one but there's not another OP for this one in, in the same prepositional phrase. If it was in his arm, chest, and backbone, whatever, then both this would be a compound OP. Having looked to the rest of its contents and having looked to the supplementary pistols. Two is a preposition, so this would be an OP. Okay, that he wore in his belt. Guess what this is? So this would be, right? Looked to a smaller chest beneath his seat. Oop, beneath is a preposition. See, I'm, I can catch those pretty quick, generally always, but there's a few times that it's kind of hard to. So this one would be Two is a preposition to a smaller chest, so that's an OP too. Remember, we're looking for a compound OP. That means two objects of the preposition in one prepositional phrase. But these are not, these are each in separate ones, so they're not compound. In which there were a few Smith's tools, a couple of prepositional phrase, torches. Are you catching the hang of it? and a tinderbox. For he was furnished with that completeness that if the coach lamps had been blown and stormed out, which did occasionally happen, he had only to shut himself up inside, keep the flint and steel sparks well off the straw. Okay, let's go back and look at this. Keep the flint and steel sparks. Let's see, what is that? Keep the flint and still sparks. Keep is a action verb, correct? Well, he shut himself up inside. Keep the key. Okay, so let's find a subject. Who or what keep? The sentence goes way back here. For he was furnished with that completeness that if the coach lamps had been blown and stormed out, which did occasionally happen, he had only to shut up, shut himself up inside, keep the flint and steel spark. I think keep is a pre, is a is a uh, action verb. So he keep no he steel sparks. I don't know what that is. Let's look over here. Mm, where'd it go? He where'd he go? Dun 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 in his bell. I can't even find it. Where'd he go? Good gravy. It's too early for me. Six thirty in the morning. Torch Keep the flint and steel spars. So it's at the end. Okay. Okay, that's what I thought. It is a, um, it is a uh, action verb. Keep spark. So that means this then would be a direct object, a direct object, because that's what receives the action of keep. Okay, so keep the flint and steel sparks well off the straw, 
Off, I know, is a preposition, so this would be an OP. And let's see, off the straw and get would be an action verb. So this would be uh, get what? Lot. This would be a direct object. Okay, so this is where, because you notice the word and here? Okay, so keep and get. So I believe, let's see, this and uh, this. Yeah, because, well, they're just showing you and. So they just did it from and, and this would be your compound, or I'm just gonna put C, this would be your compound adjective. Yeah, sparks. Compound adjective. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, flint and steel, okay. When you find there's one compound object present and one compound adjective, keep the flint and steel sparks. Yeah, I, I don't know how to explain this one to you. Sparks. Okay, I'm just, I'm guessing what this is showing. Let me erase this. I'm a little bit confused about this as well, and I, I hate to tell you that, but I am. So keep is a verb, and this is the direct object that receives the action of keep, okay? This is a prepositional phrase. Now, get is another action verb, and lot is the direct object that receives that action. And seeing that it's in a whole sentence, you know, you've got two verbs here in this entire sentence. They're not two separate sentences. And so they're saying, I think what they're saying is, um, actually, I did the wrong, I think I did the wrong thing. I've got you nice and confused now. That's great. So I think what they're saying is that it's a compound adjective because flint and steel, because sparks is is a you know a noun. So flint and steel are both adjectives that describe this noun. So this would be a compound adjective. That's what it's telling us. I was confused because I was thinking it was going to be the underlined words, but a direct object is not an adjective. A direct object is going to be a noun. So the compound adjectives at is going to be, did you hear my rooster? It's going to be two adjectives with and. So that's what that is. So yeah, that was hard to find. Okay, let's finish this out. We also have to look, that's our compound, we have to look for a compound OP. That means there's gonna be two objects of a preposition in one uh, thingamajigger. Okay, so get a lot. Okay, with, with is a preposition with tolerable safety and ease. So then both of these are OP. I wish that rooster would be quiet. Okay, which makes this then We'll just draw it to end. This would be our compound OP. Because this is a prepositional phrase with tolerable safety and ease. So there's two objects of the preposition because there's and. So that, that was easy to find. Okay. If he were lucky, in five minutes, N is a preposition and this is your OP. All right, now that you're nice and confused, I hope that, oh my gosh, that rooster is right by my window. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I hope you're nice and confused. <laughs> no, not really, I hope you understood some of it. Uh, now what I'd like for you to do since I was gonna grade this is right up here, write no grade. And then when I grade yours, I won't include this as part of the grade. So just write that up there for me, okay? 
All right, now, if you still don't understand, it's okay. It's not that you need to master this right now because we're gonna continue working with this over and over again. So it's not like something you have to master right now. So anyway, but I hope that helps you out.